ASCO 2023, we have seen several highlights regarding gynecologic cancers. However, um, we picked out now two highlights from my perspective. One was a SHAPE trial investigating the role of the radicality of surgery, which is needed to treat patients with cervical cancer of a size of up to two centimeter. Second one was a duo study evaluating the role of duvalumab and olaparib in primary therapy of patients with advanced ovarian cancer. At ASCO 2023, we were very excited to see for the first time the results of the SHAPE trial. The SHAPE trial included patients with cervical cancer up to a size of 2 cm who were notable negative in imaging. And it was a very long discussion and open question what kind of radicality of the kind of hysterectomy is needed to achieve good results. Historically, um, in this patient population, there was an indication for radical hysterectomy, which means with the removal of part of the vagina, the parametria. But we had already some good data that maybe the simple hysterectomy might be more than adequate in this very selective patient population. In this international trial with participants all around the world, about 700 patients have been randomized to a simple hysterectomy compared to radical hysterectomy, including all the lymph node assessment. And we have seen regarding the oncologic safety that both kind of hysterectomies are safe and are associated with a very good prognosis. But as expected, we have seen that there was much more problems regarding incontinence or urinary tract problems, especially associated with radical hysterectomy and we have not seen this with a simple hysterectomy. Therefore, this trial has clearly defined the new standard of care regarding the kind of hysterectomy, which is indicated for this patient population with a size of cervical cancer of less than two centimeters. At ASCO 2023, um, we have been able to show the first time the PFS interim data of the DUO trial. The DUO trial included more than 1,000 patients with BRCA wild type, high grade advanced ovarian cancer, figure stage three to four. In this study, patients were at first tested regarding BRCA status and BRCA positive patients were allocated to a separate treatment cohort and randomized were the BRCA negative patient population. These patients were randomized to ARM1, carboplatin, paclitaxel plus bevacizumab, followed by bevacizumab, ARM2, carboplatin, paclitaxel, bevacizumab, followed by bevacizumab and dovalumab, and ARM3, which includes carboplatin, paclitaxel, bevacizumab, and dovalumab, followed by bevacizumab, dovalumab, and olaparib. The primary endpoint of this trial um, was an hierarchical testing of the HRD patient population of ARM3 comparing to ARM1, and subsequently the ITT population was tested. This interim analysis, about 86% of the events um, needed for the originally planned final PFS analysis already were reached. And we have seen a statistical significant benefit of ARM3 compared to ARM1 regarding progression-free survival. Subsequently, also the ITT population was tested and we have also seen a statistical significant difference of ARM3, including bevacizumab, dovalumab, and olaparib compared to the standard ARM. Regarding ARM2, where only dovalumab was added, we have seen a numerical, but so far statistical, not significant benefit. And the further subgroup analysis comparing ARM3 versus ARM1, we have seen a consistent effect in the forest plot for all patient population. And I think one of the 
most important further aspects that we have seen is that there was also um, benefit for the HRD negative population where we have discussed in the last year the high met unmedical need to improve the outcome also for this patient population. And we have seen now for the first time here benefit um, comparing of new therapy with an active standard of care. Further analysis are ongoing. We wait now for the final PFS data and also for the OS data and all the further analysis will which will be presented soon.